Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me, I will now then live for thee. I will now then live for thee.
this weekend, being mindful of where you are and, and how we can be listening more for you in our lives. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Talk directly into the mic so I can see which button to push. <laughs> it's not showing up. <laughs> and talking about the things um, I learned about to God um, and 
praying to myself again in my head. And it was just like this sense of like, I don't know, like just pure peace. Like I didn't, I wasn't anxious anymore, I wasn't nervous anymore, which is unusual because it was like a pin drop silent in our dorm too. Because we stayed in a dorm, all six of us girls, um, to do a room. And it was so quiet. I'm like, literally the girls are quiet. But, um, but like I said, I'm uncomfortable with my situations. Like, even when I take the tests, I want something to fidget with. I want noise going on. But I always tell my teachers, I would do better with like, heavy metal music playing in the background than I would with silence for a test. So it was an uncomfortable space, but I got used to it. And I was like, for the first time in forever, I felt really comfortable in a really quiet space. And that was because of God. He, he put me in that position and said, look, you need, you need to slow down, you need to be quiet and listen to your own thoughts and listen to me and let me talk to you. Um, and it felt good and it felt great. And I want to rewind now to like 10 years ago, um, a quick story. I went to Camp Horizon, I'll come back to this later, but I went to Camp Horizon in, I want to say it was like 2016. It was a while ago. I was pretty young, and I remember it was just a three-day camp, and I remember the pastor of our camp was talking to us one day about a real life experience he had when he heard God's voice. Um, he didn't clarify, I don't remember if he clarified if it was like an audible voice he heard or if it was in his head or what, but I was thinking, my imaginative self, that he heard God being like, you are the like out loud, you know, like it's a big, deep voice, and I was like, whoa, I want to hear God's voice, and so they gave us the opportunity after he, they talked and gave the message and we worshipped to go find a spot on the camp to go sit somewhere for 30 minutes and listen for God's voice, and so of course I went out and found a big rock to sit on that looked over like a really pretty view, and I sat there and I was like waiting, just tapping my foot waiting, and I was like, not hearing anything. So I kept waiting and I kept waiting. I never heard anything. I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, why didn't I hear God's voice? Like, he told us if we listen, we'll hear him, you know, and I never heard him. And obviously, I was young, so I didn't fully understand. Um, but I think sometimes when I'm waiting for God to give me guidance, I'm waiting too impatiently, like I was in that situation, um, to hear something that he's talking to me about or, like, to give me guidance on something. And then, this silence that we did at Friends Youth was probably the first time I ever really like, listened to God, and it's been a game changer for me. And I've implied, I like implemented it. Sorry, I'm bad with words. I've implemented it into my everyday life every single day since then, and I felt so much more peaceful, so much less stressed. And So the ways I've implemented this silence into my life so far, it's sometimes it's as simple as riding in my car. I love listening to music when I drive because it helps me focus better. Because again, when it's quiet, I don't focus. I stop wandering around. Obviously, you've got to pay attention when you're driving. <laughs> so I started practicing um, driving with worship music, but I just turned it really quiet and just let it just be quiet so I had room for myself to think and to hear my music. And eventually it got to the point where I was able to drive completely off and I can drive in the quiet, which also never happens. And now I can do it all the time, especially when I'm stressed. Um, and, and instead of calling up mom on those car rides and like, mom, oh my gosh, listen to what this happened and here's how this goes, um, I can say, God, listen to this and hear how this goes and tell him about what I'm frustrated with because he's not going to backfire on me sometimes or be frustrated with me. He's going to listen to me and he's going to be calm. He's going to tell me it's going to be okay. You can slow down for five minutes, take the car ride to listen to me, talk to me, and hear what I have to say. And that's helped me too in situations, especially with people. Sometimes people start talking and they ramble and you hear them and you know they're wrong, what they're talking about, or you feel frustrated with what they're saying or the way they're expressing something, and you're hurt by it or you're annoyed. And instead of opening your mouth and saying, hold on, that's not right, or spilling the true version of a story and then getting your foot stuck in your mouth or getting in trouble with someone else later, practicing the silence gives you power in those situations 
to stop, think for a couple minutes, and 99% of the time, I personally ended up not saying anything, and I just kind of nod my head and say, okay, you walk away from it before, I'd be like, mm -hmm. that's all right, you know? And then I was constantly arguing with people, and I didn't want to, but I was frustrated because I felt like conflicted with them, or felt conflict with them, um, but now I know that that doesn't really matter. A week from now, I'm not going to remember those conflicting situations. So that's that's one way that this silence that we practiced has helped me, is in like in-person situations, um, not opening your mouth and saying the first thing that comes to mind, and giving God time to talk to me so he can talk through me to other people. Um, I think too, this like having silence has brought me closer to the people around me. Like I told my mom one time, I was like, hey, can we go for a car ride? Right? Just, just be quiet for a while. And she's like, yeah, sure. And so we went for a car ride, we got Sonic, we didn't say a word, we didn't listen to music, we just had the windows down, we went on some dirt roads, and we drove for like an hour. And it just was like, my mom, like she picked up on my emotions, but she's not, but of course she's going to. Um, and for you guys, it might be your significant other, or your best friend, or uh, your kid, or somebody, but it felt good to be in silence with God and my mom at the same time, because it honestly felt like we were able to communicate more of our feelings and frustrations without actually saying anything and then being harmful by saying things about other people or using an appropriate language to just calm and hear from God, which is the best thing you can do for yourself, hear from him instead of rambling and ranting. <coughs> Um, I also learned to communicate differently and almost more gently to people by practicing silence and friends. Um, like I said earlier, sometimes I just say like, okay, and nod my head when someone's talking to me and I'm frustrated with them. And now too, when people talk to me, like I, I make sure, I, I've understood from a lot of feedback from people that I'm a very hyper, overwhelming person sometimes and I can be a lot and I've realized that that's not always what's best for Myself, but I need to focus on others too, and God, and what He wants me to do for other people. Um, so I learned to, or I taught myself, um, well, I guess I let God teach me, so I'm to face that, how to be more calm with people when I am talking and I'm not in silence. Um, it's almost like my heart, like my brain is silenced, and then my heart is talking instead, if that makes any sense. So, when I do talk to people who, like, some, you know when people just kind of write me their own way sometimes, and they're just kind of like, I don't know how to feel about this situation, or I feel uncomfortable or something, and instead of walking away, because sometimes that can cause more conflict, um, like, just bring, like, my little sister, for example, we argue all the time, it's just, we live together, and we argue, and when she gets upset with me, sometimes I'll just leave, like, I won't say anything, I'll just turn around and walk away, and I've learned that that's not always the best option. And so I use the silence of my brain and the confidence of my heart to talk to her and be like, it's okay, hold on, let's, let's take five minutes here and just think about these situations that we're in and realize, like, is this the best way to handle it or can, like, are we gonna continue fighting or are we gonna handle this better? So I learned to be more gentle because I do, I'm quick to anger too, I will admit it. I am easily frustrated with a lot of things and so, Learning to talk more gently to people instead of snapping and saying something quick and outbursting on somebody. It, it's beneficial, it really helps. It's frustrating, it's hard, but sometimes it's what's best. Um, I'm sure if God let out his frustrations on us, the world would be burning into flames because we mess up all the time. And so I'm very thankful that he doesn't and he's graceful. And so we need to do our best to be the same way. It also, it just makes you a more peaceful person in the long run, too, when you learn to talk to others more peacefully. It, it just makes you feel better, more calm, more confident in situations of stress and anxiety. Um, and when you feel at peace, you sleep better. Which, sleep, I know, you're sleeping, but like, good rest is good, and the body needs it, and God gave us sleep for a reason. Um, so, going to bed frustrated and angry is so so 
taking the time before bed to journal your thoughts or practice the sense is great. And so here recently I've been taking like an hour before I go to bed, I put my phone down, put everything away, I grab a little book and pen, I write down my thoughts, anything that I'm annoyed with or frustrated with, and then I read it and I turn it into a prayer and I write it into a prayer and I say it to myself and then I lay down and I go to bed. And I swear that this solved my insomnia because I am a horrible sleeper and doing this has helped me sleep so much better. And I even have people tell me like I look better because I'm sleeping better. I don't have this drug of high backs and I'm just tired all the time. But at the end of the day I don't have a grumpy face anymore because I'm rested. And rest is important just as much as silence is in time of God because it, your body needs it. God gave it to us. And it helps you feel restored the next day and it keeps going into the rest of your life. And so um, I would encourage you to start the habit of spending some silence with God before our bed. Um, even if you're next to somebody, just to be quiet and be the rest of God and hear His voice, giving Him time to talk to you and spend time with you and letting you know what, you need, what He wants you to know for that night. Um, so you can sleep better and you can feel better the next day and have a little positive attitude, which helps you have more peace to talk when talking to people and knowing how to respond stressful situations. Um, and then again, you can also practice silence. Like if you do need to talk about stuff before, and you can just also practice silence like sitting in car rides. Um, I am in and out of the doctor's office all the time for all kinds of different problems. Um, sorry, and so sometimes when I'm in really nervous, I get really nervous and I get nervous, I shake really bad. Um, even if I say I'm nervous, it should be. Reacts to stress, um, and so I've gotten in the habit too of the doctor's offices um, spending time and just like I shut my eyes for a few seconds and I just listen and I relax and I take care of it to just be with God for a minute before I go into my appointment and freak out about whatever it is that might be wrong. So it could be something as simple as sitting in the waiting room and spending five minutes with God. Um, and there's many other times throughout the day that you can like sometimes I'm in class.
this verse, it just stuck out to me. I opened my Bible, I started reading, I was flipping through. I had this one underlined on our writing page. I didn't have very many notes on it. I was like, I feel like, like I just felt like the weight of God telling me that you needed, I needed to use this verse for today. So it's, honestly, that's why I included it. Um, but I think it does pertain to what I was talking about earlier. Like, the peace of God. It's amazing feeling. Um, it surpasses all comprehension, so all your frustrations, all your anxiety, all your worries is can be overcome by God's peace if you let him. And help guard your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. So instead of help like letting you get frustrated and angry, help guard you, he'll set you back and give you the peace that you're looking for. And most of the time that's obtained through just being silent. Second, letting your mind rest so that God can spend time with you in your mind and help you know how to handle situations, how to feel, um, how to be anxious, and and just feel calmer about yourself. Um, again, like I said, I am a quick to anger person, and it's frustrating. It's hard, you know, to like constantly want to blow up. I don't know why I feel that way. I do sometimes, but it gets less and less every situation because of the habit I picked up that I learned from friends who said to do of practicing silence. So back to friends, um, when we practiced silence for those 12 hours, I felt uncomfortable the first time we did it. When we came back the next morning, um, Miranda said a prayer for us, and then we were able to talk again. But I like, didn't have anything to say. Like, I did, you know. Um, but I just felt calm. I was like, I don't feel like I need to spill my guts on somebody. I can just be. Um, and it was it was weird because I never really felt that calmness before. Um, and I think a lot of the other girls felt the same way. When I talked to them later about different situations, and they had like time to go relax for a little bit or go play a game, they all said that like they felt so just calm because they gave time to God to be with them instead of being with other people and constantly go, 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 and talking about it. Um, and they all said, they all agreed, we all agreed that we slept better too. Uh, <coughs> so the following night, I believe we did not do silence. Um, and I almost kind of wish we had, because I was like, I want that same feeling of like really quiet. Um, but it was good to be able to talk. And then the, the following night after that, we did silence again. And this time I was like, I'm ready for it. I'm excited, you know, I wasn't nervous, I wasn't anxious. And so I think that example of going into a situation a little terrified and coming out of it with God and realizing, oh, I can't handle this. Because all things are possible through him, even if the same little minuscule situations, such as being quiet for 12 hours. Um, I went into it in that same situation again, like full on ready. Like I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to be quiet, and like come talk to me. I was excited about it. So I think use that example too in other situations, slightly unrelated to what I've been talking about. Like any other situation you're frustrated with or you've been struggling with, um, handle it with God first, and then you'll quickly learn that every time after that, it'll be a lot easier, you'll feel a lot more calm especially when you give God time to work on you through silence. Um, so again, I encourage you all to spend time before you get to bed or instead of being on your phone, to spend time with God and feel His presence. And then I would like to share with you Philippians 23, 1 through 4, no, Psalm, Psalm, Psalms 23, 1 through 4. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in great pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I think this passage pertains very well, too, to what I've been talking about. Um, so I'll kind of break it apart a little bit. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, 
I think God is just saying, like, I'm, I'm your leader, let me lead you. But leading yourself, but trying to do things by yourself, let, but letting others influence you, let me be that influence. Because others can positively and negatively influence you, and God will positively influence you every single time. So let him be your leader and not yourself. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So obviously, I'm not asking you to go lie down in the middle of a field. Um, but you can lie down before bed, like I was saying, and relax. Um, although, I mean, I'm from the country, so sometimes I'll go like sit on top of a hay bale with my dog and just relax because it's peaceful and it's nice. So if you want to, I suppose you could. Um, and he leads me beside quiet waters. I'm not exactly sure what he means by that, but I'm sure that it will speak to all of you how he wants it to. Um, but for, for me, I think that feels like he leads me through the minor situations in life, not just the big ones. And so, um, I can't remember the name of the verse, but it's something along, <coughs> it's something along the lines of, like, praise God in every situation, not just the big ones, the little ones too. Um, because you need him all the time, don't just come to him when, I mean, obviously come to him when you're frustrated and you're sad and you're worried, but come to him when you're happy and rejoicing, rejoicing too, because he's, he's the reason you're in those situations. And he restores my soul. That touches me in the way that I felt. I felt restored the next day after I practiced silence. I felt so just like calm and at peace and felt good. Like I said, I didn't feel like I had to immediately start talking again which is rare. Um, he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his sake's name. Or, whoop, name's sake, sorry. <laughs> um, he leads me in the path of righteousness. It's a straight and narrow path that not many people take. Um, but I hope you all do by accepting Jesus into your heart. Um, but he will lead you down the path of righteousness if you ask him to. It may not be easy, it may be frustrating, but that's also why it's important to practice silence um, so that he gives you peace in those situations when you are worried and you are anxious so that you can go into the next one ready with God's armor on your back. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. So instead of maybe feeling scared or frustrated or worried of, oh my gosh, am I going to get out of this situation alive? Am I going to be okay? How am I going to handle the frustrations I'm feeling right now later? Um, God's saying, don't worry. I got you. I'm here for you. I'm standing right by you. All you got to do is look at me and say hello and ask me to talk to you, and I will talk. So I think that's kind of what he's saying there. And then you're about other staff that come for me. So... The armor of God is great. It's a good thing to have. Um, so I hope if you want to write this message or write this passage down again, I think it's Psalms 23, 1 through 4, if you want to write it down. Um, and I would encourage you to go back and look at that and read it later. I read this passage all the time, actually, and that's why I included it. Philippians 4, 7. 4, 7. Thank you. I love that passage. I read it all the time because it's comforting to know that God's got my back and he's here for me. And in times of trouble and in times of peace, I can be with him and he will help me feel better. you can spend silence with him, whether it's driving in your car, sitting in the living room, or practicing before bed. But if you would, I'll at least just buy grants and spend some time.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this space this weekend so we can fill our hearts with more of you together. Thank you for the time you offered us to spend praising your name. And thank you for waking us all up this morning with hearts ready to seek peace and guidance and love so we can continue growing with you. I ask that you help us focus for the rest of the day and to help us listen, even in silence, for your voice and your guidance. Thank you for loving us and saving us all from our sins. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. Hopefully I didn't talk to you fast. If you're able to understand me. I'll start to your week. Take it to the Lord and 
our sins and griefs to Thank <laughs> you. 